Hello everyone, I'm Cheryl Fox and I work for Dr. Sivas, the carb addiction doc. Many of you may already know from some of my previous videos that I am a registered dietitian and you can also find me on Instagram at carbaddictionrd. But what you may not know is that I am also a diabetes educator. That means that in addition to helping with lifestyle changes around food choices, I'm also a resource for managing blood glucose and insulin for those with diabetes. What I would like to do today is to present a case where we were able to help a patient drastically improve their blood glucose control in a very short time span. While this video is not in itself medical advice, it is for education and information purposes only, know that if you are struggling, this is not an impossible dream. Our patient has worked really hard and has given us permission to share their story, believing that it may give hope to others. A cornerstone of our plan is the use of continuous glucose meters. We're big fans of the Dexcom G7 CGMs, Patients who wear them can share their data with our clinic so that when we meet, we can really get into the nitty gritty of the impact of their food choices, as well as fine tune their insulin dosing and timing. Our goal is to help patients achieve tight blood glucose control while using the least insulin possible. This may seem like a well duh approach, but in fact, you would be surprised. So many healthcare providers in the diabetes space teach patients to count how many carbs they will eat and how to dose their insulin accordingly. If this is you, or you know someone who does this, then you know that calculating how much insulin to give yourself based on food choices is inherently inaccurate and can quickly lead to a roller coaster of glucose values where you chase highs with more insulin and treat lows with more carbs and so on. More and more, we hear stories of patients adopting a low-carb way of eating. This has helped reduce insulin needs, getting them off the big coaster and onto the kitty coaster. Dr. Richard Bernstein was a driving force behind this movement, and it has benefited many people with type 1 diabetes, just as reduced carbohydrate intake has benefited people with type 2 diabetes. This has become so important for type 1s, since far too many develop what is sometimes called double diabetes. This is when, in addition to type 1, they develop insulin resistance or even type 2 diabetes. As you know from following Dr. Sivas, we are all about reducing carbohydrate intake, so naturally this makes sense to us. The thing is, though, blood glucose can rise for other reasons than just carbohydrates. Exercise, stress, even protein. These are things that are difficult to predict and preemptively adjust insulin for. Pardon my lack of artistic skills, but here is a rough drawing of what a CGM shows us. The American Diabetes Association goal is to maintain blood glucose between 70 and 180 milligrams per deciliter. So you can see here I have drawn lines to show that target. This is what a CGM thread might look like for someone who ate a meal that contained carbohydrates. This might be someone with type 1 diabetes who mistakenly underdosed insulin for any of a number of reasons. You can see the spike that occurs. Yikes, they panic and add more insulin. It can be tricky to know how much more to add, so a frequent consequence is overdoing it, and suddenly they go hypoglycemic, seen here as going below that 70 milligram per deciliter threshold. This is very dangerous, and this person now is feeling shaky and sweaty and needs to address this immediately, so they drink a Coke. They quickly feel better, but whoops, now their blood glucose is rising again. What to do? So what makes our method truly unique is that we take advantage of the predictive feature of the Dexcom G7 CGMs to mitigate blood glucose rises before they become problematic and irrespective of food consumption. So no matter what the reason is, we address the rising glucose. So we're not fixing highs, but rather flattening the peaks, and thus patients experience fewer lows, also known as reactive hypoglycemia. We set firm targets and over time adjust these tighter to achieve the blood glucose control that people seek to obtain metabolically healthy ranges. Dr. Sivas and I have helped many people implement this process and are getting terrific results. Patients are reporting much improved hemoglobin A1Cs and much tighter blood glucose control. Patients share their CGM data with us, both Dexcom and Freestyle Libre, so that when we have consultations, we can address specific events to adjust therapy. 
This makes it a real partnership, and I love what I do because I see such amazing progress every day. It's life-changing for our diabetes patients, both type 1 and type 2. So let's get to the story I promised. For the sake of anonymity, I'll call this patient Jane. Jane was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes six years ago. This means that unlike people with type 1 diabetes, she is able to produce insulin, but has developed insulin resistance such that the amount she makes is not enough to handle the glucose coming into her system. Initially, she took lipizide. This is a medication that belongs to a class of drugs called sulfonylureas. It stimulates the release of insulin from the pancreas, thus reducing blood sugar and increasing glucose storage. Recently, however, this was insufficient to manage her blood sugar, and she had to begin using exogenous insulin. When I first met her, she said to me, my quality of life is awful. I am in constant pain. I feel as though I have tried everything and cannot stay on track. I view this as my Hail Mary. I want to be healthy enough to ride a bike again and go for walks in my neighborhood. For people without diabetes, this may seem shocking, but the truth is, Diabetes is a life-altering and devastating disease, but it doesn't have to be. Keep listening to hear what we were able to accomplish by working with her as a team. Here is what her CGM looked like at the beginning of her journey. As I mentioned earlier, typically the treatment goal with diabetes is to maintain blood glucose within the range of 70 to 180 milligrams per deciliter with a pre-meal value ideally of below 80 and a two-hour post-meal below 180. As you can see on this day, Jane never got down to that range. This thread shows that her blood glucose was dangerously high, putting her at risk for complications such as cardiovascular disease, neuropathy, and other issues. Dr. Sivas had her discontinue the glipizide and instead initiated treatment with Genuvia. Genuvia is what is known as a DPP-4 inhibitor, which helps your body to regulate the amount of insulin produced following a meal. We also doubled her long-acting insulin, splitting the dose into a morning and an evening injection. Finally, she was educated on reducing her carbohydrate intake. She acknowledged that this last part would be a challenge for her as she has used food as both her solace and reward for most of her life. To support her efforts, we initiated twice monthly check-ins. Progress was bumpy at first, but over time she learned how she responded to different foods and began to make time to prep foods that had less impact on her blood glucose. By mid-February, we had again increased her insulin, going to 20 units in the morning and 15 at night. Her hard work was beginning to pay off and she began to regularly dip into the 70 to 180 range as can be seen on this thread from February 17. But it wasn't all smooth sailing for Jane. Her job is very stressful and she reported some slips with her diet, particularly when her pain flared up and she would self-medicate with carbohydrate foods. We increased her basal insulin to 20 units twice a day and added five to 10 units of rapid acting insulin for highs. At the end of March, she had an epiphany. She had thought long and hard about what her life would be like if she continued on the road she was on now versus what she could achieve if she got serious about her food choices. She found the biofeedback from the CGM to be invaluable to help keep her on track and she felt supported by regular check-ins. Jane really got serious about her efforts and before long she was able to reduce her basal insulin to 10 units twice a day and no longer required any bolus insulin. Here is her CGM thread from March 29, where you can see that she was within the 70 to 180 range all of the time, despite having reduced the amount of insulin she was using. By mid-April, Jane remained stable at 20 units of long-acting insulin per day and was pleased to report that she was beginning to see some weight loss. By May, she was down to only 4 units of long-acting in the morning and none in the evening, and this is what her CGM looks like today. Nice and boring. So to recap, within four months, Jane had gone from dangerously uncontrolled blood sugar, despite taking five units of insulin daily, to fantastic blood sugar control using only four units of insulin daily. The, these two images are what is called the AGP, which stands for Ambulatory Glucose Profile. This report gives us a summary of blood sugar within a defined range. Here I have selected two week periods from early in Jane's therapy on the left to a very recent thread on the right. 
On this last AGP, you can see that on April 30th and May 2nd, she went low overnight. That is when we had her discontinue her evening insulin. As you can see, the improvement is absolutely astounding. Her average blood glucose went from 262 milligrams per deciliter to only 998 milligrams per deciliter, dropping her estimated A1C from 9.6% to 5.7%. And her time and range, that is the amount of time spent in that target range of 70 to 180 milligrams per deciliter, went from 1% of the time to 99% of the time. This is remarkable and definitely a story worth sharing. Jane is a highly motivated person, determined to get her health back on track, to live the life she wants rather than what a diagnosis dictates. I can attest that she presents herself as a much changed person today compared to when I first met her. She is smiling and happy and definitely enthusiastic about the future she has rewritten for herself. I hope this story has motivated you to take control of your own health. If you think that this type of program would benefit you, please call and set up an appointment to discuss taking control of your blood sugar. I would love to help. Thank you so much for listening.